yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Quite tame acceleration, but it soon gets up to speed. Welcome to MCN and welcome to our ultimate adventure bike test. So behind me really is the cream of the adventure bike class in terms of spec of the bike, in terms of the price of the bike and in terms of the technology and pedigree that's gone into all these models. So earlier this year Ducati launched the Multistrada V4 Rally. It's 170 horsepower loaded with electronics and it kind of took the adventure bike class in terms of spec to a whole new level. So we've come to a very sunny Wales to test the Ducati against its major peers. So to my left we have the BMW R1250 GS Adventure. Needs no introduction. It's been the benchmark for, for literally decades. The Ducati we've mentioned. Here we have the KTM 1290 Super Adventure R. And to my right the Triumph Tiger 1200 Rally Explorer. So for clarity and for consistency, we've put all these bikes on the control tyre. So we're using the Dunlop Trail Max Raid, which is a new tyre to the market, a 50-50 tyre. So designed to be exactly for these sort of motorbikes, to be able to handle the power, to be handle the electronics. But then when you finish with the tarmac, you can move on to all the, 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 the dirt and the tracks and actually take these things off road and they will work. So we've got the bike and what's really important with this test is the actual testers we've drafted in to, to evaluate these bikes. So myself, Michael Guy, been at MCM for 20 years and been riding adventure and rallies and enduro for quite a long time. We've got Michael Needs who, for anyone that knows the channel, needs absolutely no introduction. He's ridden anything from 125cc scooters through to Valentino Rossi's Yamaha M1 and everything in between. We've got another man called Mark Richardson who's joined us on the test. Mark is an experienced off-road and adventure rider. I first met him in 2006 when we were riding across Africa. And finally, and certainly not least, we've got James Hillier who is an Isle of Man TT race winner and also Dakar finisher. So, to see what these bikes can do on and off road. Keep watching to find out which one really is MCN's ultimate adventure bike. So we're deep into our heavyweight adventure bike test, both on and off road, as you can see from the state of the bikes. We've really have done some good road mileage, real varied road mileage from riding from MCN headquarters uh, in Peterborough right over to Wales, obviously, includes a lot of motorways and dual carriageways. And then as we've got into Wales, we've done a real mixture of fast A roads, just some real nagery stuff. So it feels like a good opportunity to just sort of take stock of what we've learned about the road performance. Got Michael Knees with us, who's, uh, it'd be great to sort of get your kind of take on this class. Mm. And then also, you know, just let's talk about the bikes, you know, one by one. Yeah, well, they're hugely, in all senses of the word, impressive bikes, aren't yeah. they? And they all excel, they really do excel in certain areas, which is gonna make choosing a winner really difficult, isn't it? But I think for me, a big adventure bike is basically a big touring bike that looks cool, looks rugged, yep. and has got a modicum of off-road ability because someone like me isn't actually probably gonna take them off-road like, sure. and hasn't got the same skill level that you have. Um, so. If I'm going to judge each bike by the criteria that I'm going to own this bike to do big distance, I want a bike that's really comfortable, I want a bike with a big tank, maybe low maintenance in some respects when it comes to chains and shaft drives and things like that, yep. that kind of makes it easier for me to choose a winner really right. because they okay. are so varied yep. really even though they look like quite similar. Yep, okay. So, well let's, the Ducati is the new bike. That's the new one on the block, that's isn't it? The, yeah, that, that's the one that's, you know, sort of raised the game in, certainly in sort of the technology levels yeah. and the power output. How do you rate it? Where does you, where do you feel that sort of sits? And, and I guess that ultimately does that kind of fit your criteria of what you think these bikes are about? It's really interesting. This bike is a super bike with knobblies, isn't it? Yeah. Basically. <laughs> and in my mind, I kind of think, do you need that? You know, if, if you want to go really fast and you need a sporty bike, 
I probably wouldn't go for the a rally. I'd maybe just go for a V4S or a more traditional Tourer, something like that. I mean, this is undoubtedly the most sporty here. Yes. It, 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 when you push it through these mountain roads, it is, the handling is delicious. The brakes are superb. The steering's fantastic. The power from the engine is immediate. The quick shifter, everything about it is everything a sports bike rider is going to love. Yeah, yeah. But I think that for normal riding and normal touring, you're not going to use much of that good stuff for much of the time. And for me, it's not the ultimate in terms of comfort. No. It's a little bit uncomfortable for me. I always, with all multi-striders, I think it's just the way the riding position is. I always get a sore lower back after probably about an hour. Right. Um, and that's probably the, one of the main reasons I wouldn't kind of choose this for the road. But I know you really like it. Yeah, I agree with you that there are there are plusher rides in these bikes here, but I love the way that it just seems to work in such harmony with itself. Yeah, if that makes sense. You know, like the engine and the electronics and the electronic suspension, just as a package, it, it feels very very complete. Yeah. But in comparison to maybe the BMW or the um, the Triumph, yeah, when you jump on the Ducati. It, I think I just quite, it just feels, you feel quite busy. It yeah, feels, exactly. feels quite revvy. But that kind of takes me back to the sportiness of it, whether you actually need it for the kind of use it's going to get. And on the sort of sporty side, I guess, let's, let's talk about the KTM. Yeah. This is your long-term test bike, actually. Yeah. You know it inside out, don't you? I do, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the first real miles I've done off-road, but we'll, we'll come to that later. Yeah. But yeah, I've done about 4,000 miles of it on-road, essentially, yeah. I think that strikes me about this bike these bikes have always scared me a little bit a little bit intimidated by the fact they're so overtly off-road styled you know yeah. you've got the ktm branding and the ready to race and all that kind of stuff this is the r model yeah what's the r over the s is much uh, so sharper so yes yeah, so you've i mean the, the main difference is, is bigger 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 wheels you've got a uh, 21 front and 18 rear and you've also got longer travel higher quality suspension but not electronic suspension yeah. and you've got a few you've got rally mode in there yeah, so yeah. just that it just affects the, the way that the motor picks up and yeah. how aggressive so it's it is. quite it's still quite focused isn't it like you say the others have got electronic suspension haven't they this yeah. hasn't but the thing that really surprised me when i got on this bike was how refined and docile it was i thought it would be it would feel like a motocross bike but right, it doesn't okay. it's quite refined quite plush it doesn't jump out of your hands it no. does what you want it to do yeah really friendly yeah very sporty you yes. know when you've got your, your sporting game on it's brilliant yeah you know and it's not affected by the tires that we've got on it either really the no. fact it's got big knobblies it's still handy. Yeah, and with the 21 front you know you think it's going to be compromised obviously it's a 90 width tire as opposed to a 120 yeah you know that there has to be less grip doesn't it yeah but, but it doesn't really seem to suffer at all no no it's beautiful um but then that same thing comes back to me if I just wanted to go touring yeah. and just have a it's not, relax, it's not. it's not that bike. It's still a bit busy. It's still it's still very sporty. The foot controls seem a little bit mm. into the frame for me. Um, screens ever so low. Screens low. I've seen you put like an extender on the yeah, on the which, top. Yeah, which to, just was. Yeah. It, you know, it was like the first time I got to the bike, I was like, oh, I'll put the screen up, and it was at the highest setting already. Yeah. You know, it really yeah, exactly. is low, but great off road. But yeah. It's just completely out of your way. Yeah. Again. For a weekend away, that's going to involve a lot of Welsh roads. That's a no-brainer. You yeah. know, I can live with that quite easily. But to you know, to live with it long term and do lots of touring on it, I don't really think it would be the bike no, for me. I agree. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so moving on, like uh, I guess the, the class daddy, if you like, the BMW is yeah. the one all these manufacturers have been bidding to try and overtake for. Yeah, that's for been decades. The, shi the shining star, of the GS, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So. What do you, you know, what do you make of that? Because it's such a, such a package that's just evolved, evolved, yeah. evolved. It's just, well, we go from the sporty two, and now we're going to sort of talk yeah. about the more traditional big adventure bike. Um, and the GS is, it's endlessly impressive. I, I never want to like a GS because they're so popular. Yeah. And every time I get on one, I think, oh, damn it. It's, <laughs> it's really, really it is good, good, isn't it's it? Good. <laughs> I love, I love the fact it's quite low slung. Yeah the feeling of grip you know it feels like it's dug into the tarmac it's very flickable the brakes are superb i love the the rawtiness of the engine yeah. the engine sounds it's like the a best, best sounding bike here 
Yeah, easily. I mean, the, 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 the Ducati when it's on the pipe is sounds something special. Yeah. But for everyday stuff, the BMs, yeah, it's exactly. lovely. The riding position is superb, wind protection is good, the screen is fantastic, and absolutely it doesn't handle as well as these two. No. Nope. It doesn't perform as well as these two, but I could easily forgo that for the sort of the luxury and the long distance comfort that that's going to give me. Yeah. And the looks, you know, it's a big old Tonka toy, isn't it? It's a yes. big Jeep on two yeah, wheels. It's the ultimate one, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It? Yes. And it's got a 30 litre tank as well. Yeah. Just going back to the KTM, that's got the smallest tank here, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so, 23 litres. Yeah, yeah, so it really is. So, so, yeah, I really love the BMW. What do you think? I love the way that it changes direction. Yeah. You almost can't fathom it how... It doesn't go up and over, no, does it? it, go it dum, it's, dum. it's really impressive. And I do actually like, even though I kind of quite like the normal pitch of a bike, I mm. like the bike to pitch yeah. when you brake, so you just... And that obviously doesn't because of the telelever system, but it, it doesn't sort of you don't it doesn't actually take anything away from no, the experience. The no. way you can roll through corners, and the throttle connection's nice. It's you know, beautiful. it's got a yeah. lot of torque, yeah. the most torque out of all these bikes here. And I just think the way you can sort of pick up that throttle so kind of almost impossibly early in the corner, yeah. it makes it kind of quite sort of real world fast. Yes, yeah, exactly. What I don't like is I don't like. I don't like the shaft drive. I don't like no. the clinks and the clunks, and yeah. and I don't like the quick shifter. I no, think it's, quite sometimes it feels like you're just sort of pushing through rubber. I mean, to compare the quick shifter on the BMW down and up compared to the Ducati. Oh, I mean, the Ducati just, is just that's like a Panigale. You just need, you've got to try it. You can't you can't believe how good it Beautiful. is. Beautiful, almost it's, like you know. a seamless shift, isn't it? Yeah. But with the Beamer, one thing about it though, it's starting to feel its age a little bit. Mm. I think. But that doesn't matter, does it? Because there's an R1300 GS coming out very soon. So yes. it probably yes. doesn't matter too much. Yeah. So yeah, I, lo I love that GS. The GS would definitely score over these two for me on the road. Right, Just okay. because what, what it can deliver to you, yeah. even if it's lacking a bit of performance. Okay. And then the uh, Triumph. So it feels like Triumph set out their stall numerous models ago mm. to sort of overtake the GS. That's right. And, you know, that was new last year. That was new last year. And they even went as far as to say in the, the, their launch that they were comparing it to the GS all the time. You know, yeah. they weren't mucking about. You yeah. know, they've obviously done their homework and yeah. got a stack of GSs they were testing for however many years and they wanted to, to better it. Yeah. And, and what's your take on it then? Well, they have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they've, yeah. They've out GS the, the GS. You know, what I'd say is you know, it's not the best looking bike. It's not the most characterful. It's pretty forgettable, really, isn't it, when you ride it? And it's not the kind of bike you, you, you look back at when you walk away from. But to live with, it's just, I love it. it. It is the most comfortable bike I've ever ridden of any motorcycle I've ever ridden. Wow, okay. <laughs> I can literally spend all day on it with no aches or pains. The screen's quite noisy compared yep. to the others. And generally, it's got quite a noisy screen compared to any bike. But I can kind of live with that for the, the comfort. You know, it's a, it's a tall, roomy bike, which is good for me. I'm six foot tall. It's got the 30 litre tank. Yep. Uh, and I think the geometry of it, Triumph don't make a bad handling bike, whether it's a Daytona or a Street Triple or even a Rocket 3, and this is the same. It's just so nicely balanced. Yep. Again, the KTM or the Ducati could run rings around it, but it's just so neutral and easy. And the, the engine character is, with its um, T-plane crank almost sounds like a mild KTM, yep. with the way it kind of clatters a little bit. And like literally the moment you pull away on that, it, it sounds different. Yeah. And yeah. It, it like you say, it feels it does feel like a, a mild V-twin yeah. down the bottom. I've been really impressed with what Triumph have done yeah. with that. Really I think done a good I think job. to to you know, like you said you said, you know, beating ourselves, you know, they set out their stall to overtake the GS. And, and they've it, done it. It's done it because it, it even it's got the shaft drive, but it just feels nicer, doesn't it? It feels yeah. more refined. Yeah. The shifter is more refined. The shifter's smooth. It's exactly. almost like any of those sort of gripes, they've kind of ironed those out. Yeah. Um, and you say it, it's a very neutral bike. It's yeah. a bike that you could, you just, you just feel quite relaxed on. Yeah, exactly. And you know, comparing these bikes, I've got to put my kind of touring bike hat on rather yep. than my sports bike hat that yep. I normally wear. <laughs> and you know, it, the Triumph for me, 
is number one, you know, for that reason, then it would be the Beamer, then the Ducati and then the, the KTM. Yeah. But they, they all excel in different areas and we're about to find out really what they're going to be like off road. Yes. Which, which is where I step aside because <laughs> I am not good enough to handle a 160, 70 BHP bike that weighs 260 odd kilos. My, uh, my sweet spot's more a Honda CRF's <laughs> 250L. <laughs> but uh, you and James are going to uh, give them yeah. a good rag around sweet lamb, aren't you? Yeah, I think you're doing yourself a bit of an injustice. But yeah, we brought in, um, in uh, James Hillier, who, uh, yeah, probably, again, hope he doesn't need too much of an introduction. He's a, he's a weapon on a motorbike, on and off-road. So uh, really looking forward to doing more off-road yeah. and, and really trying to understand how he sort of rates these bikes. And that would be interesting when you, we put our opinions together, what is going to be the best overall. Absolutely. Great stuff. Top job, Michael. Thank you. No worries. So we've come to the end of the road section of our test, which is where these bikes will obviously spend the majority of their time. And now we're moving to off-road, where we really want to try and understand how capable they actually are. So to do that, we've drafted in James Hillier, who can really push these bikes to the limits. So that it's fair, the order of the bikes is going to be random, pulled out of a hat. And James has also done a couple of laps on each bike to understand where the course goes and what works. Let's see how he gets on. Right, so we've got James about to head out on the Ducati Multistrada V4 Rally. So get it started, James. Three, two, one, go! Well, <laughs> I think I held my breath a little bit there at the start. Bit of a choppy water crossing then. Bit of a puddle, deeper rats, you really feel the weight of these bikes. Another one here, trying to just keep the bike as straight as I can because, uh, but also at the same time, not fight it. You know, these things need to move a little bit and react to the terrain. I'm taking it through, a little jump. Oh, that's where this electronic suspension is not great for me. I lose confidence when the bike leaves the ground. I just don't think it can quite calculate what's going on with the wheel speeds and the camera will not do this justice a uh, quite a nagery tight little chicane on these marble like stones uh, and a tight tight hairpin this is where you really ABS kicked in on the front there horrible horrible really where you feel the weight of these bikes is when the stand stuff stuff once in motion they actually ride with their weight quite well. Out onto the tarmac section here. I'm not going to lie, probably where I feel a bit more at home. There are a few bits here where you um, could actually find yourself getting into trouble. Little crest here with the wheelie. Actually feels good through this section. That was good. I enjoyed that. <laughs> That's quick. That's quick. Right, that is. We're going to know a lot. A 14338. 14338. Wow, okay. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. I enjoyed that. <laughs> we can see in your eyes, mate. Oh. So, what, what, what was it like? Um, it's a bit slimy, a few sections up there, but it. I'm just riding with the weight of the bike, but um, this really works well on this tarmac section, yeah. which I sort of expected. But yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was that was a big big grin. You know, I was grinning the whole way along this last run. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah it'll be interesting. I don't know if the other bikes will quite compete with this along here, but we'll, we'll see. We'll give them a go. Yeah, excellent. And what was it like? I mean, it's quite rutted. There's a bit of water. I, I was saying that water's probably going to make it more slippery as it gets splashed around. Up, yeah, but I would say. Line choice is a little critical up there because there's, there are some sort of easier lines, but um, you've just got to sort of, to a degree, let the bike go where it wants to and not yeah. fight it too much. And it, that, to be fair, there's a little jump up there where it, it loses itself a little bit, but yeah. um, everything else it dealt with really well. Cool. And the traction control, how was that? Was it intrusive? Or? Um, fine. Just a little, I felt the ABS a little bit. Right. Down, onto the, down into the hairpin on the front, but the, the rear obviously locks up fine. But uh, 
I think that's all of these bikes we're going to struggle on that very it's like a standstill hairpin but um mm. just a case of getting it's through it's brutal it. isn't it yeah that's that's <laughs> this, it's almost where the slowest section is where you could probably make the biggest mistake yeah yeah um, yeah if yeah. the weight gets away from you. yeah great stuff right on to the next one <laughs> right we've just seen the ducati go that's obviously the newest bike on this test and essentially we've got the the granddaddy of the uh, adventure bike market the bmw r1250 gs adventure Right, whenever you're ready, James. Right, three, two, one, go! Whoa. <laughs> I could definitely feel this suspension falling through. I don't know if it's the actual suspension setting or the weight of the bike itself, but the main stand's hitting the floor a little there. Through the bit of water splash. Possibly. Whoa! Wrong line there. These big bikes, you've sort of got to let them go when they want to move within reason. Little jump. Again, main stand on, on the floor. Definitely not as confidence giving this bike through these nagery bumps and uh, narrow lanes. Again, through the twisty chicane really feel the ABS on the front tyre there, front brake is um, this is probably what I'm least looking forward to here with the GS, it's tight hairpin, I've literally got to stop the thing so easy to, silly mistake down onto the tarmac, left here, Swoo! <laughs> good fun though and a great sound from a great sound from this BM for me. For me, I mean close to the Ducati, but it is a uh, oh, yes. one of the best sounding bikes on this test. Oh. There we go. You ain't getting any slower through there. About a second and a half slower. One forty-five. Bad, wow. Is it? Are you laughing the old girl yet? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, GS, I did you a little bit of an injustice then. <laughs> <laughs> that looked like it might have got your attention. Oh, I'm sweating. <laughs> that made me sweat a little bit. Did it? I think Why, it from like, a nerves point of view? Yeah, or? that was like um, more out of shape up the top there. It just really didn't deal with the, 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 the those little ruts. Yep. They're not big, but it just carries itself through it kind of as. Uh, Less control, I would say. So right. The Ducati was a lot more confidence giving. Yeah. And a little bit like lazy through this last run there, this one. That on the road bit? Yeah, compared to the Ducati was nimble and, right, okay. as you'd expect, more sport bikey. But, you know, sounds great, does everything, but um, harder work on this, much harder well, you, work. You, you are, you're breathing now. Yeah. You're breathing yeah. a lot more than the Ducati. But it's weird, because on the, on the, as a road bike, it really, the weight works with it. But yeah. on, on off-road, it doesn't carry its weight well, I, I don't think. It, no. um, okay. That was that was a bit hairy a few places up there. So. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, it's, it's still dead soft, isn't it? The suspension. Yeah, really it falls soft. through and it bottoms out a lot there. So yeah. whatever, however the suspension works, it's obviously not enough. And we're in the hardest setting. And I and I, I noticed I can hear the the main stand hitting the floor quite a lot, which right, okay. I haven't had on the other bikes. And they're so. not big jumps either; they're just no, little kickers. And compressions, it just uh, yeah. it just collapses through rather yeah. than holding that support. So right. Um, yeah, that was interesting. So how, what, what's your prediction on the time? They're definitely to... slower, it must be slower because I, yeah. I just couldn't carry the speed. Yeah. Not too much here, but I definitely couldn't carry the momentum up the top there. Right, okay. About a second and a half? Slower. Slower. Right. Not a lot then. No, not, not, a, lot. not as much as we thought. Wow, well, that's surprising. Yeah. I think if you were riding all day, the Ducati would be uh, an easier ride, you know, that was... I suppose, right. it, but it is, you know, <laughs> if you're in MotoGP and you know, on a 145 lap and you're a second and a half off, you might as well go home. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Right, so next up is the Triumph Tiger 1200 Rally Explorer. This has been the surprise of the test so far, so I'm really interested to see how we go. Right, James, when you are ready. Three, two, one, go! Oh 
god, I actually forget to talk. Through the water splash, a little bit of a deep rut there. A bit more water. I think this bike actually, suspension wise, gives me the best ride over this terrain out of the electric suspension models actually softens up quite well the bottom bottom the rear sorry rear shock bottomed out there and I felt a big compression but with the weight of these bikes that is going to happen let's see how it deals here through the little technical chicane oh definitely get me a little out of breath here right back to the standstill and for the height to ride this bike actually feels very high but it really works its weight quite well in these slower section slower sections so let's see how it deals here on the road section probably one of my favorite bits of the course quite tame acceleration but it soon gets up to speed Whoa. I don't want to get too carried away there because uh, there we go I that's quicker than the Ducati. 39? 39? Yeah. 39? <laughs> Ducati who? That's set the cat amongst the pigeons, wow. isn't it? See what he says. Wow. Jesus. We, we can tell a lot by the, by the whites of his eyes. <laughs> what was that? 39. Really? Yeah. That was know, fast. It's stealthy, this, you know. It doesn't... It was a bit aggressive through the bumps up the top. Like bottomed out a little bit, but yeah. um, actually dealt with everything quite well. Did it? And and this road section, it was it was just easier to ride. You know, it was stealthy. I would say, All like right, it's okay. a little bit of a an assassin. I think it kind of wow. it, it, amazing. It, like the electronic intrusion. It, it was. I could feel it, but initially I thought it was a hindrance. But I, it, it it actually made this run easier. You know, then because this start we didn't think you made it looked worse. It run up slower, the hill, yeah. it looked, there. It looked yeah. like it was cut in and weird how it you've got to adapt quite quick but I think if you ride it to, if you ride to that it actually works well it surprised me that did it was uh I, I'm surprised actually wow. yeah, yeah we're surprised yeah. Yeah. that's not a small amount faster either is it no, no. a lot that's you. <laughs> Jesus oh, and well. what was it like through those ruts did you know you said you felt a bit of a passenger on like the BM for example uh yeah much much like better i think the bigger front wheel helps yeah. a lot yeah. through those and it's, it's it's very mutual this bike it doesn't pitch too much and yeah. i think that, that however the front suspension works it just kind of gives you a, a, a confidence to kind of push on that bit more you know wow. it, it wow. feels like you've got more travel than the other bikes it's weird i don't right. really uh because i'm sure they're very much similar but uh but maybe with the electronic suspension it's letting you use more you know the way the, the way the parameters have been set i think it's opening it up rather than fighting the bumps it kind of works them and and gives you that bit bit back so the like uh, non-electronic suspension. Al almost yeah it's just it's a little bit of throttle connection and i think the engine on this lacks a little bit of punch off the bottom which perhaps the other bikes have but when you get mid-range, it, then it pulls like a train, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome job. <laughs> Brilliant. Good work. <laughs> right, next up, KTM 1290 Super Adventure R. In, on paper, it's the most off-road bike here. 21-inch front wheel, non-electronic suspension. Electronics are off. It's time. Go time, James. Right, when you're ready. Three, two, one. Oh god, I actually forget to talk but this bike is definitely, without shout, the most capable and rideable off-road out of these on this test. Slightly wrong line there, that might cost me a little bit of time. I'm sure I can pull it back though because straight away, honestly, this bike just puts you in a position where you, you shouldn't get too many surprises. Personally, I'm really not a fan of this electronic suspension that the other bikes have 
It's a big filter. Oh, I lost a bit of time again there. Hopefully, not too much because all of our feedback so far, this is the best bike on the test for this sort of thing. So much bomb end grunt. I'm up to fourth gear already. Through the gate post. Back to third. I know. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Wow. What was it? 134. 134. <laughs> Let's see what that was. Nice. What was going to say? Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> right, before, before you tell me, I, I, went, I took a wrong line at there, so I lost a little bit. And I feel like I fluffed the hairpin a bit, but um, yeah, just straight away feels, yeah. you just know where you are with it. There's no surprises with the suspension. And this engine gives such like torque, grunt from the yeah. bottom end. Yeah, yeah. You can almost be a gear higher everywhere and just use that lower rev range. So, right, okay. Um, so it just feels in your hand. And... Yeah, total connection with your the yeah. throttle. You know, it uh, wears, I feel like there's maybe a little bit too, more, too many filters on the other bikes. It, right, okay. Uh, that's the that's the this is the most rideable bike. Uh, what was it? Slower or faster? So what do you think? I, I think it should be faster, but yeah. I made those mistakes, so I don't. Uh... Move the one forty four. No, no I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> one thirty four. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So just a just quicker. a different different world. <laughs> so we're looking at we're looking at like ten seconds. Yeah. Difference. Yeah, yeah. On a one forty five lap or yeah. one thirty. Yeah, 10 seconds quicker than the Beamer, I yeah. 9 than the Ducati. Wow, I really don't think there's a lot of time difference in this run, it's a lot of it is all confidence. So with the, the road thing, even though you think, you know, you've got, I know you've got the, you've got the big old wheel for the off-road, but it's yeah. narrower, yeah. whereas you think, you know, the small 19-inch wheel, 120 width, you'd think you'd, you'd be able to pick up a bit really on the BM and the Ducati. For sure, but I think, I think it'd be interesting to have known a sector time for this time, I don't think there'd be a lot there, but this just fills you with confidence and, and like I said, no surprises in those horrible nagery kind of bits where you want the throttle in your hand to, to pitch the bike back or yeah. you know control it, name it. it um, it's right there, there's no, no filter. So uh, it, it, it uh, gives you confidence rather than takes it away, I think. Awesome. That's, wow. a, that's surprising. Yeah. <laughs> Great job, James. <laughs> well right, so we've just finished these uh, hot laps with James pushing these bikes on a on a you know a, a set course controlled tires drop the flag saw you like wheel spin away up the hill and uh go for it basically which is which is fantastic I mean, it was awesome to watch so starting with the bmw you know how did that feel when you really you know tried to take take it on and push it honestly it was a little bit let down i ex had a high expectations of that bike it was too soft and it didn't really react to everything as well as I, f it couldn't support itself. It fell right. through everywhere and um, it didn't feel slow riding it, but I think that's because it was bouncing me all over the place and not dealing with stuff, you know? So it, it was, it got through everything. I didn't get stuck anywhere or any major problems, but um, it was just hard work to ride through through that terrain. But general riding around here on the trails and gravel paths, it's been fine. It's done everything all right. I think it's just a bit, it feels to me like undersprung and we, you know, we have messed around with the suspension there, but it, it we tried a lot of settings and we just couldn't sort that out, could we? It just, I think the suspension lets it down a little bit. Right, okay. And the Ducati, like the new kid on the block, the bike with all this power, this incredible V4 motor. You know, we saw you like howl off the start. We could hear you, you know, going through the woods. You know, what was that like? Um, fun, you know, I, I did, I genuinely enjoyed riding that bike off road, but again, with all the bikes and the electronic suspension, that, that killed it a bit for me. It takes that predictability away. And uh, I lost confidence in, in, in all three of those bikes with electronic suspension because you just can't quite foresee what's gonna happen. And I think the bike's trying to react to something and you hit something else and it's not ready for it so you just we we're always on the back foot with that electronic suspension on that on that course we we're on but again general riding through here the electronic settings with throttle control and it's a nice bike to ride it does yeah. everything and it sounds sounds great the ducati right okay and then the triumph so 
I must admit, it didn't look like you got a particularly good start up that hill. It didn't look like it was sort of digging in, didn't look like it was hooking up. But the time obviously said something completely different. And you had a big old grin on your face when you arrived yeah. back, which I think took us all a little bit by surprise. Yeah, it surprised me, actually. And, and in this whole test, the Triumphs has surprised me. Um, this is at the electronic suspension bikes. This is, the, I felt they've got this, the best it could out of the three. This was the best, it, um, particularly the front forks and front brakes were particularly good on and off road. It just a nice sharpness and, and confidence inspiring, you know. It, uh, the, the only downside of this, I think there's a little bit of engine note. It doesn't sound as great as perhaps the other bikes with the right. engine note, but the, it has this weird mechanical grip it finds and mm. um, the engine's actually very tractable. Um, and, and, and doesn't necessarily feel fast, but the times proved it was, you know, it surprised me when you told me the time of this bike, it was a bit of a shock because, and I guess that's a good sign if I rode it quick without feeling it. So yeah, yeah. that can only be a good thing. And then more sort of bigger trails, faster, faster trails. Yeah, for sure. You know, out, out of the four, this is the most comfortable bike for me. And um, you, you feel quite up and on it and, and nothing's kind of, you feel like you can go go against anything. It was a good bike for me. I think uh, I enjoyed this, and in, in whatever we put it through, it worked for me. Okay, and then finally the KTM, which I guess you know from our off road background, we sort of knew it, it should be the bike to do the business off road, yeah. and it and it was, and we we almost pretty much saw that from the off you just sort of disappeared off and you just looked more committed from the word go. I mean, how, is that how it was when you got right yeah, going on within it? within like the first 50 metres, I felt like I knew where I was at with the bike and just the old school mechanical suspension with springs and damping <laughs> and oil, it, it, it just works. Um, also that V-twin engine is, is we, we've discussed, I was, you can run a gear higher and use the torque and the, the throttle connection from, you know, the, the, the rear wheel is, is always in your right hand, just instant yep. torque and power. There's no filters there to kind of cut it back and, and hold, hold you back, which riding off road, you need the throttle right in your hand all the time to pitch the bike and get over stuff or attack and drive through ruts and things. So it, that was, um, a, again, a, a joy to ride. What, what we both expected anyway with, with KTM's heritage and, and experience in building off-road bike and, and the time spoke for itself. That it, you know, Even with a few little mistakes on the lap, I, I still smoked the others. So it, yeah, uh, big time, yeah. I, I thought at a point it was going to be close. You know, I thought I might have lost some time, but uh, it's a surprise actually how, how good that dealt with everything. And, um, and then the general riding, you know, when you're not trying to push the limits. Yeah, I, I think again, they all do a job, but that one, it just deals with stuff. There's no surprises with the KTM. That suspension doesn't react or, 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 or do anything you don't want it to do, no. you know, which I've had a few moments on the Ducati. It, it, it reacted to something which I didn't like. And uh, whereas that doesn't change, it just does the same thing all day long and you know where you're at with it. Well, great, James. I mean, it, honestly, it was such a pleasure seeing you tear off through these words. It was, uh, it was awesome. And, you know, a great man for the job in terms of uh, CV. You're right up there. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kind of to conclude the test, you know, this, from the outset, this was very much about doing a road element and an off-road element. And we had two great people to give us their opinion. We got Michael Neves from the road perspective. He's just, you know, he, he knows these bikes. He knows the level of technology. He knows the development that goes into these things. And he, and he knows what works and what doesn't in the real world, because he does an awful lot of miles as his day job. And obviously, you know, James's credentials, I mean, we didn't really touch on James's road stuff, but you know, he, he isn't bad. Um, and obviously the, the off-road side of things. So to, just to remind people, so, you know, Michael's rating for these bikes from a road point of view was the Triumph came first, just because, you know, adventure, riding by its very nature is about getting out there and exploring and doing it for a couple of hundred miles or you know it's pouring down with rain and they need to be quite cosseting they need to be places you want to be and spend a lot of time in and that was why it was michael's winner quite a neutral bike but a very very capable bike very very comfortable bike second was the bmw for pretty much the same sort of reasons you know it's still yes it's a bit of an, the oldest bike here but it's still got this fabulous throttle connection, changes direction so well with a low slung engine and it again it's a nice plush place to be. The Multistrada was third just mainly because it's of almost sports bike like um, and then the KTM was fourth 
nothing wrong with either of these bikes, but they're just maybe a little bit too focused, too sporty for real long, long days in the saddle. Coming to the off-road side of things, you know, we had a few surprises and we had a few givens in a way. The KTM comes first because it's the most, nat it's just, this, this is its natural habitat. Um, whether you're trail riding or whether you're like James and you can really sort of start to push these bikes to the next level. So that was first. The Triumph was the surprise. They've worked very hard with this bike. They've done a lot of work to make it plush like the GS, but I think it's its off-road potential that really was a standout for us. We didn't expect that and it really delivered. Third was the Ducati. Again, worked well, but I think was ultimately let down by the fact that it's got a 19 inch front wheel. I think that and combined with the electronic suspension that these three bikes have just could have kind of held it back a little bit. The BMW was fourth, just not really been able to sort of hold its weight and support that sort of configuration and with the shaft drive, etc. So the winner of our test is the Triumph, which is an incredible achievement given the group of bikes and the level of competition in this market. As to which is second, third, fourth, that really does depend on you. That depends on what sort of riding you want to do, what sort of riding you want to be, whether you're a distance person, whether you're an off-road person, whether you're a sporty person. That's the dilemma that you have to focus on. So if you want to give any of your thoughts in the comments below, we would love to hear them. Thanks very much for watching. A super interesting test. It's been a whole lot of fun. Thank you, James, for, for joining us on this. Thanks for Wales. Thanks to Sweet Lamb for letting us come and have a play on this amazing place. Please like and subscribe to see more videos like this.